Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day to always give him the thanks right now. Thank you, Jesus. Another day to always give him the praise and worship his holy name because he is king of kings and he is Lord of lords. There's nothing too hard. There's nothing too difficult for our God. There's nothing that he can't do. There's nothing that's out of control for Jesus. He can take anything that is broken and shattered into a million pieces and make it brand new back over again like it never been broke before. That's how powerful our God is. That's how merciful our God is. That's how loving our God is. He can do it all. He created the whole world, the heaven and the earth all by itself in six days without no help. Without no YouTube, without no World Wide Web, without even a blueprint. He did it by himself. So that right there alone, my sisters and brothers, should tell you there's nothing too hard for Jesus. As long as you put it in his hand and you are trusting him to turn it around for you, you best believe he's going to do it. But the key is, do you believe? Mm, 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 mm. The key to the point is, do you believe that he can do it? Do you believe it's not too hard for him? Do you believe? And if you believe, the word of God says that you shall receive. And God is a man that he should not lie. He stand on his words and he stand on his promises. The word of God says in Numbers 23 verse 19 that he can't even change his mind even if he wanted to because he have a command from his father to bless those who put their faith and their trust and their hope in him. Where do your faith lies at with Jesus? Where do your trust lies at with Jesus? Where do your hope lies at with Jesus? And if you don't know, there's something wrong. But praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing. Because the God we serve, the God we praise, glory, hallelujah, he is still on the throne. And he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. He is still listening to prayers and he also are answering prayers right now. He is still delivering people from darkness, from sin, from idolatry, adultery, fornication, masturbation, whatever it is. He is still delivering people. That's why it's so important to always praise him. Just don't praise him when things are going good because you got to remember, my brothers and my sisters, life is like a roller coaster. It goes up and it goes down. See, a lot of you, you only praise him when things are going good. You only praise him when things are going right in your life. But the moment when your life takes a turn and it dips down, you forget about Jesus. You forget the man who made a way the first time is the same God can make a way again. You forget all about that. You turn your back against him. But Jesus always have his eyes on the ones who thank and praise him and glorify him when things are not going good. When they're in dog, when they're in pain, they suffering, they hurt. But God said, I can trust him and I can trust her because look what they at. Look what they're doing. They're not just praising from their lips. They're praising me from their heart. They're rejoicing my name from their heart. They're glorifying my name from their heart. And guess what Jesus is saying? I can trust her and I can trust him. The point I'm about to make to somebody right now today and I know what some of y'all about to tell me right now. Because Jesus really trusts you. And I know half of you about to say, oh yeah, he can trust me. But could he really, really trust you? Amen? Praise is what I do. Now, I have a love letter that I always share with my Heavenly Father God. 
And I'm here today to present my love letter to him and only him. And every last one of you, my brothers and my sisters, should always have a love letter. And if you don't have a love letter, it's something that's wrong with you. And I'm just going to tell you why you should have a love letter. What did he do so special for you today? And how many of you right now today told him, thank you. So if you have a love letter, can you please join me and present your love letter with Jesus with me? Heavenly Father, God is coming for you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. To let you know, Father God, from the bottom of my heart that I have a lot to be thankful for. I'm so thankful, Father God, because you woke me up this morning. So thankful, Father God, because you breathe life inside of me this morning. So thankful, Father God, that you breathe air inside of my lungs. So thankful, Father God, that you made sure that my heart was beating on a regular beat. So thankful, Father God, that you made sure that the blood, glory to God, was flowing through my body. Because a lot of people today, Jesus, didn't even wake up this morning. A lot of people today, Father God, are still in the hospital room, in the ICU department, hooked up to all kind of machines. So yes, Jesus, just for that reason, just for that moment, I have a lot to be thankful for. And I'm so thankful, God. It's because of you, God, where I'm here right now. It's because of you, God, that you gave me the strength to get up this morning, to go in my prayer closet and kneel down before you and to pray to you. Even though you knew what I was going to pray about before I even kneeled down. But, God, you made that happen. God, you also gave me the strength, God, this morning that I was able to pick up my Bible this morning and read a word from you and just meditate and stay focused on your promises, Jesus. You made that happen. Father God, I have a lot to be thankful for today, God, that I was able to, to meditate on the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit continue to fill me up, fill me up, the Holy Ghost just burn through me today. So yes, Jesus, I had a lot to be thankful for. So thankful, Father God, because this is the day that you had made, and I'm so glad to be a part of and rejoice in. Father God, I have a lot to be thankful for today, God, because you blessed me with a roof to provide for me and my family. Food to put on our table. Clothes and shoes to put on our back. God, there's a lot of people today, God, don't even have a roof to provide for their family. Don't even have clothes and shoes to put on their back. Don't even have food to provide for their family, God. There's a lot of people, Father God, that's hurting right now, that's suffering right now, God. But God, that you bless me with, that you bless my, your sons with, that you bless your daughters with, God. So God, I have a lot to be thankful for. So thankful, Father God, for the job that you provided me with, God. It might not be the best job. It might not be all of that job. It might not be the most high paid job. But God, it's a job that you blessed me with, God. That I can go back and forth to work. That I can punch in and punch out. And I have a guaranteed check to cut to me every week or every two weeks. There's a lot of people right now today, Jesus, that's begging and searching for a job during this pandemic right now. They'll do anything. Just to be in your son's and your daughter's shoes right now. So, Jesus, I don't take this for granted. But I do have a lot to be thankful for. So thankful, Father God, for the automobile, God, that you have blessed me with. To get me back and forth to work. To get me back and forth, Father God, to rent errands or to go to the grocery store, God. I don't care what kind of automobile, God. It's the automobile that you blessed me with. And I'm thankful that I have one. Because you got a lot of people today, Jesus, that's walking. They, de they depend on other people to, to pick them up. They depend on the bus system. They, they depend on the train. They depend on cabs. They depend on Lyft. They depend on Uber. But God, you blessed us with this job, with this automobile. Father God, I have a lot to be thankful for today, God, that I'm able to fellowship with my brothers, my sisters on your YouTube channel, on your platform, which is the largest growing platform right now today. So God, hallelujah, I have a lot to be thankful. So grateful, so honored, so blessed. So the point I'm making to you right now today, my brothers, my sisters, if you, if you don't have a love letter to present to Jesus, something wrong with you. Then he wake you up this morning. Then he give you another chance this morning. Then he give you another opportunity this morning. Then he let you see life this morning. And if he did all that, 
how many of you right now they told him thank you that you that you ain't have how many how many of you told him thank you that you was not that that you have a lot to be thankful for how many did y'all tell him that today and if you have not told him that today is today it's not too late to say Jesus thank you but Jesus I have a lot to be thankful for Amen Amen God is good all the time and all the time God is good and he is so worthy so worthy to be praised amen amen glory to god and i'm here right now today to repent of my sins and i'm just talking for myself my brothers and my sisters because we all dropped the ball today we all made some mistakes today we all fell short of god grace and mercy today every last one of us every last one of us did that so there's no need trying to hide it there's no need trying to sugarcoat it you might well just keep it real and be honest I said, Jesus, we messed up. We did wrong. You know what we did before we did it. So, God, we coming to come clean right now. So, can you please keep it real and be honest with me? Because if you can't keep it real and be honest with Jesus, who can you keep it real and be honest with, my brothers, my sisters? I'm just keeping it real with you. I'm just being honest. And if you feel like repenting of your sins, please join me right now. Lord Jesus. I ask of you in your holy, precious, mighty name to please forgive me, my brothers and my sisters, for every and anything, Jesus, that we've done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Father God, please forgive me, my brothers and my sisters, for every and anything, Jesus, that we've done wrong, God, that was not set right in our heart, that was not part of you. Father God, please forgive me, my brothers and my sisters, for every and anything, Jesus, that we had in our mind that was not part of your Father's will. Please forgive us right now today, Jesus. Wash us clean right now today, Jesus. Purify us through your blood right now today, Jesus. Clean us up as white snow right now today, Jesus. Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiveness for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a second chance. Thank you, Father God, for giving us an opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for giving us a clean new slate. Thank you, Father God, for understanding. Thank you, Father God. You didn't have to do it, but I just want to say thank you. I just want to say thank you, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I just can't thank you enough for this awesome and beautiful blessed day today. I just can't thank you Father God, for this word. I can't thank the Father God for this anointing message. I just can't thank the Father God for the air that we're able to breathe right now. I just can't thank the Father God for our help and our strength, your grace and your mercy. I just can't thank the Father God for the food that you have blessed and prepared to put on our table, the clothing shoe that you put on our back. I just can't thank the Father God for your words. I can't thank the Father God for your promises. I just can't thank the Father God for the angels that is joining us in praise and worship right now. I just can't thank the Father God for the Holy Spirit right now that's moving through us right now. And it won't leave us alone, glory to God. I just can't thank the Father God because you're a man that you should not lie. That you stand in your words, that you stand in your promises. I just can't thank the Father God because you never leave us or forsake us. I just can't thank the Father God that we can always call on your name and you will always be right there. I just can't thank you, enough, Father God, that we can always depend on you, that we can always rely on you. I just can't thank you, enough, Father God, because we hold on to your unchangeable hands and you won't let us go. I just can't thank you, enough, Father God, because you won't give up, you won't give up on us, God. No matter how painful and difficult it is. I just can't thank you, enough, Father God, that you are on time, God. You're a merciful God. You're a faithful God. You're an amazing God. You're all of that, God, and more. I just can't thank you, enough, Father God, how you moving mountains right now. On our behalf, we don't even see it or realize it right now. I just can't thank the Father God for our blessing. I can't thank the Father God for our breakthrough. I can't thank the Father God for our anointing. I can't thank the Father God for our deliverance. I can't thank the Father God for a double portion. I can't thank the Father God for more than enough. I can't thank the Father God for the rain. I can't thank the Father God for the connection. I can't thank the Father God for the resources. I can't thank the Father God for the open doors. I can't thank the Father God for the closed doors. I can't thank the Father God because because you about to show up and show out. I just can't thank the Father God because you about to do a new thing 
and your sons and your daughter's life and that you're about to do a new thing in me. I just can't thank the Father God because we're about to reap our harvest this year in the mighty name of Jesus. I just can't thank the Father God because you're about to put us at the right place at the right time. I just can't thank the Father God because you're aligning everything up. I just can't thank the Father God that you're about to manifest everything in our life. I just can't thank the Father God because we're about to meet our bow ass. I just can't thank the Father God because you're about to open up the floodgates of heaven, God, and that you're about to pour a blessing on your sons, a blessing on your daughters, a blessing on me, God, that we're going to be able to receive it all. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. That's why I pray you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I worship you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you. I magnify you. And I shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart out to you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I brag about you. That's why I boast about you. That's why I talk about you all day long, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I give my heart out to you every day, Jesus. That's why I want more more you and less of me, Jesus. That's why I'm still holding on to your unchanged by hand because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen and amen. I want to talk about the day that someone and somebody don't messed up. They have crossed the wrong person this time. They have done it this time. And this time, they don't know they ever, ever, ever will get a chance back with you. Now they hiding from you. They ducking from you. They dodging from you. Now they out of sight, out of mind. Now they're too scared to face you right now for the, what they've done to you. And right now it's eating them up. It's driving them crazy because they know that you're the one that was faithful to them. They know that you're the one that was loyal to them. They know that you're the one that had their back. They know that you're the one that you had their best interests. But they let the enemy fool them. They let family members talk them out of something. They let so-called friends Betray them on you. And when they didn't go their way, they said, Oh Lord, I don't think he I don't think he or she will ever accept me again. Because this ain't my first time doing this to him, but this time I really don't mess up. This time I really don't cross the line. And somebody know. Somebody just like that. You already don't forget that person for what they done. But to them, they scared to face you. They're living in so much guilt right now that they're so terrified to even face you. They're making up all kinds of excuses why you can't see them. They're making up all kinds of excuses why you can't go see them. Why you can't just make bygones be bygones? It's because of the guilt. They say, I don't know if he'll never give me another chance. I don't know if she'll ever give me another chance. I don't know if they ever look at me the same. I don't know if they ever trust me because they know I'm not right. They know I'm dirty and low down. They trusted me too many times. They gave me too many chances. And every time they gave me a chance, I done something stupid. But this time I done the most stupidest thing in my life. They realize who I did it to. I don't know what they were smoking on that day. I don't know what they was drinking on that day. I don't know what kind of pill they popped that day. But right now, all that they can say, I messed up this time. I crossed the wrong person. I don't know if I ever, ever get another chance. I don't know they ever will look at me the same. I don't know they'll ever even tolerate me the same. Right now, it's bothering them, my brothers. 
right now is bothering my sisters. They losing weight right now. They can't sleep. They constipated all the time. They losing their hair because they know what they done was wrong. They know what they done to the person who, who was always there for them. They know they don't messed up, but they don't know how to come clean. They don't know how to face reality. They don't know how to say, I messed up. But they know how to cross you. They know how to stab you in the back. They know how to roll you up under the bus. But when it comes to being loyal and being faithful and being trustworthy to say, I messed up, it's tearing them up right now. We're going to talk about the three things, but they did. And the first thing they did, they betrayed you. The second thing they did, they switched up on you. The third thing they did, it didn't go their way. And God told me to tell you right now today. He tells us in Isaiah 54 verse 17 that no weapon formed against you, my sisters and my brothers, should never work and should never prosper. He said, never keep your eye on the sparrow, but keep your eye on the sparrow because the same sparrow that shot at you is going to be the same sparrow that's going to hit them. So God also told me to tell you, even though you know, this ain't their first time they betrayed you. God said, did it work the first time? And your answer should be no. God said, did it work the second time? If your answer is no. God said, did it work the third time? And if your answer is no, he said, it ain't going to work this time because the grass is not green on the other side. So no matter how many times they perform that weapon on you, or help me, Jesus, God is telling me to tell you that it's never going to work, it's never going to happen, it's never going to prosper. If it didn't work the first time, if it didn't work the second time, if it didn't work the third time, good God Almighty, he's telling you right now today, it's never going to work this time. So your answer is no, no, no. And that's why they know they don't messed up. That's how they know they don't cross the wrong person. Because no matter how many times that person tried to cross you or betray you, it never worked. They never prosper. But they don't get it right here. That's why they so mind boggled right now and don't know what to do. That's why they don't know how to face you. That's why they don't know how to come clean and talk to you right now. Because they don't know if you're going to see them the same way. And when they do see you, they don't have their head down because they're going to have so much shame and guilt on them. Your light is going to bother them. But I'm here today to tell somebody that sooner or later they got to see you. So how long are they going to continue to run? How much longer are they going to continue to hide and skip and jump and hop? They got to come back and face you sooner than later. Let's go with the betrayal. And we're going to go to Matthew 26. And we're going to read verses 20 through 26. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Matthew 26, verse 20 through 26. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after another, Surely not our Lord, Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand to the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, says, Surely not I right by. Jesus answered, Yes, it is you. Now do you see how Jesus already knew the one who's going to betray him? Because he's already been, he was already the betrayer from the get-go. The other disciples didn't know it and said because they never tested the spirit. Jesus had his eye on the snake the whole time. See, that's one thing that we slack. We play with the snake. We eat with the snake. We fellowship with the snake, but we never test the snake's spirit. We don't see if he or she is the right one for us. We just dive straight on in. So that's why when we get betrayed, that's why it hurt us the way it hurt us is because we put so much faith and trust and love into man. And the word of God says man will fail you. Man will let you down. Man will also betray you and turn their back against you. And that's what this person did. He betrayed the person who cared for him. 
He betrayed the person who gave him a shot. He betrayed the person who gave him a chance. He betrayed the person who gave him an opportunity. But he didn't realize what he did was messed up. He didn't realize it's going to cost him. It's going to hurt him at the end. Because in his mind, he think because he betrayed Jesus, that he's going to win. See, what he just did, he, he was performing a weapon. See, the word of God tells us, I can't, I can't stop the weapon from forming. But he do give it his word and give it his promise and say that it won't work and will not prosper. See, the one that betrayed you, they can't see that what the weapon they try to form on you is not going to work and prosper. In their mind, they think it's going to work. In their mind, they think it's going to prosper. In their mind, they think they already won, but they don't know. It's going to backfire on them. It's going to let them down. They don't know that. Now, let's go to Mark 14, verse 44. Now, we're going to talk about how they switch up on you. How they switch sides on you. How you thought, how you thought they were down for you, but the whole time, they really wept. That's what we're going to go to right now. Amen? Amen. Mark 14, and we're going to read verse 44. If you have it, let the church say amen. Amen. Now, the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away. On guard, going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The man seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus? Do you have, do you have come out? with swords and clubs to capture me. Every day I was with you, teaching you the temple's court, and you did not arrest me. But the scripture must be fulfilled that everyone deserted him had fled. Do you see how the one betrayed him switched up on him? He kissed him on the forehead and said, there you go. Do you see how the person that betrayed you, they switched up on you? They done you wrong? They done you dirty? You never thought that they'll do you like that? They had their so-called friends backing up, backing him and her up. They had family members backing him and her up. And you said, wow, you're going to switch up on me? But these are the same people that switched up on you. These are the same people that don't care nothing about you. These are the same people that never cared about you, didn't even like you. But you're going to change up on me? You're going to switch sides on me? The person that was there always there for you? The person that had your back? The person, whenever you needed a helping hand, I was there? But that's what they do. But they don't realize who they switching up on. Them same people are going to switch up on them again. Because once they get them to do you wrong and do you dirty, they're going to do them wrong and do them dirty too. But they can't see it. They ain't smart enough yet. They still caught up in the blind. They thinking the people who they hang around with because they switched up on you, they think these people are loyal. They think these people are trustworthy. They think these people have their back. But initially, they really don't. They don't care. Only thing they want is for that person to betray you and switch up on you and say, we got him now. We got her now. And once they got what they want to get out of you, they're going to leave you for dry. And some of you right now, that you're realizing that right now, and that's why you know you don't cross up. You don't mess up with the wrong person. That's how you know you don't cross the wrong person. Because you said, what happened? We were this cool the other day. We were this talking the other day. I, I switched up on my husband, my wife, my friends for you. And now this is how y'all repay me. And the first thing they say, we didn't tell you to do that. You did that. We were just saying what you was going to do. You going to listen to us when we are not happy? You going to listen to us when we are miserable? And you take our lead? You take our advice? Who was you? You had a man of your own. You had a heart of your own. But you done it because you thought it was going to work in your favor. And when the person realizes it don't work in their favor, that's when they feel so guilty. They feel so remorse about themselves. And the only thing they can say, I messed up. I crossed the wrong person. I done it this time. I don't know if I ever get another chance. I don't know if I ever get another opportunity. I don't know if they ever see me the way that they used to see me. I don't know about love 
would be the same type of love. I don't know we have that same type of friendship. I don't know we have that same type of uh, same type of uh, relationship. I just don't know. So they're going to continue to run. They're going to continue to hide. They're going to continue to to duck off because they know deep down in their heart, deep down in their spirit, they don't mess up. And the only thing they can say, I have crossed the wrong person. I surely have messed up this time. They gave me a chance the first time. They gave me a chance the second time. But this time, it's a little different. This time, I've really done it. And I don't know what to do. They are so confused right now, my brothers and my sisters. You probably don't even realize how many times they don't pick their phone up, try to call you. They leave their honey phone up. You know how many times they don't roll past your house? You know how many times they're trying to send you a letter? You know how many times they wanted to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But they have so much pride in a way, and their pride is holding them back from doing what is right. But eventually, but you know, the word of God says, pride comes for a man fall. They're going to hit that concrete first. And when they hit that concrete, you just believe they're going to pay your visit. So I know right now today, my brothers and my sisters, I know that you're already ready and set up saying, you know what? I already forgave you. But to them, they don't know that. They can't accept rejection. Because right now, they think that you're going to reject them. They think that you're never going to talk to them. They think that it's never going to be the same again. They can't accept the failure and the pain and the hurt that they cause. Because they cause pain and hurt to the wrong person. And now, whatever they thought they was going to do to you, it didn't work out for them. Now they're going through it right now. Now they're hurting right now. Now they're suffering right now. How I know? Let's go to Matthew 27. We're going to read verse 3. And if the word of day is, it didn't go their way. The first thing, they betrayed you. The second, they switched up on you. The third thing, it didn't go their way. How I know? Matthew 27 verse 3 is about to tell us it didn't go their way. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized in remorse and returned the 30 silver coins to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. So that's what the people is telling the person. They betrayed you. That's what the people is telling the people right now. They switched up on you. That's what the people is telling the people right now today. We didn't go their way. What you telling us for? They ain't that responsibility. That's yours. You did it. We ain't put no gun to your head. We ain't put no knife to your back. We didn't make you did it. You done it. So what is it to us? That's your fault right now. Amen. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away. And what? He hanged himself. Do you see? It never goes their way. The weapon they formed on you, it never worked. It's never going to prosper. I'm not saying that somebody's going to hang themselves. But I venture their guilt and their conscience is going to eat them up so bad, it's going to seem like they're hanging themselves. Because at the end of the day, the base what they're saying, I messed up. I crossed the wrong person. And it's eating them up every day. As each day go by, it's eating them up. It's tearing them up. They're terrified. They can't keep food down in their system. Their hair falling out. They want to see you. They want to say something to you, but they are afraid of rejection. They don't know how you're going to take them. They don't know how you're going to look at them. They can't take it too much longer. Eventually, they're going to be like Humpty Dumpty. They're going to fall on the wall. They're going to crack into a million pieces. Every day, God is giving them a chance and opportunity to say, when are you going to come clean? When are you going to confess? What you worried about? You weren't worried about it when you betrayed them. You weren't worried about it when you switched up on them. You weren't worried about it when you was laughing, when you caused the pain and the hurt. So why are you worried about if you think they're going to reject you? You don't know until you're going to you go confess. You don't know until you go see him and her. What are you waiting on? The message I'm, I got today is, 
What do I do now when I know I cross the wrong person? And my answer to you today, my sisters, my brothers, and if you know these, if you know that you have crossed the wrong person, and you know you've done that person wrong, and that person been there for you and been loyal to you, it's time for you to be honest. It's time for you to be a man about it. It's time for you to be a woman about it. So you know what? Let me come on, come clean. Because the more that you continue to go day by day and not saying nothing, it ain't hurting them. It's hurting you at the end. It's devastating you. They good. They at peace with themselves. But you're not at peace with yourself. The only advice I can tell you is repent to God first, then ask them for forgiveness. Can you please do that today? And you know exactly who you are. And if this word is for you, give God some thanks and praise and glory in the house of the Lord right now today. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. And I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus, I was praying this simple little prayer that God is already working everything out in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is with us.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always worship him. Always put him first place. No matter what. Always continue to seek him. Always continue to put your faith and your trust and your hope in Jesus. Always continue to pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It does not matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing I ask y'all guys to do for me, continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up too. This is Minister LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.